My name is Thomas Jansson. I work as a senior platform engineer at a company called Unicast here in Oslo. Um, and I joined Unicast almost six years, six months ago. Um, and before that, I was mainly a .NET developer. Uh, now I'm working with, as uh, the title said, Kubernetes, Google Cloud, probably a lot of Java, Go. And what I'm going to show you today is written in Bash. So I'm trying to hurt myself slowly in many ways, basically, which is quite fun. So the agenda today is I'm going to show uh, what the problem is that uh, that we solve with this small solution, uh, which I hope or think that more people might have that are using Kubernetes and uh, need to store a secret somehow. Also, our what our solution look like to understand the problem and a small demo of the tool that we have open source so everyone can try it out quite easily. So first, what is the problem? And to understand the problem, we need to understand what we do at uh, Unicast in a, on a really high level. Uh, we are sort of an aggregator of uh, many data providers, uh, which we take data from providers and then sell it on the other side. Uh, all these providers here on the, um, my right side, your left side, uh, are sending us files in S3 buckets. And to access those S3 buckets, we have uh, a lot of uh, different credentials per partner uh, that we need to manage somehow. So this is our way of dealing with it. Before we actually had this thing, we mainly put these things in different configurations for every project, which is sort of a pain in the ass to, um, to handle in the long run. Uh, yeah. So the requirements for a solution is that we, of course, don't want any credentials in, in the source code. Uh, and if you've been working with Kubernetes, there's something called Kubernetes secrets, where you can actually store the secrets in YAML files. The problem is that secrets aren't really encrypted uh, in those files. It's only base64 encoded, which it's, uh, th they are encrypted, but with a really bad encryption. Um, so we don't want to store the, those YAML files or JSON files, which you can use as well. Uh, instead, we need to have the files encrypted somehow and generate the configuration file uh, on a need basis. Uh, it should be as simple as possible. Uh, and since we are quite a small company for, still, we only have 10, 10 engineers here in Oslo, um, we don't want to host anything if we can. So that's why we're also running everything in the cloud. Uh, and it should preferably work somehow with Kubernetes secrets, and it should be one location where we can store everything. So our solution to this, um, we at that this time we only evaluated two things. Uh, one was the Vault project from I think it's HashiCorp, uh, but they don't have any hosted solutions. So we have to host uh, everything ourselves if we want to use that. Uh, we don't have any experience with it either, and it's no integration with the Kubernetes secrets. And then we also looked at Git Secret, uh, which is a, uh, I think it's an open source project. Uh, it's a tool based on the GPG tools. Um, and it's using Git to actually store the credentials and circuits, the encrypted ones. And we host it in the Git repo, which is something we already have. So that was uh, what we settled on. Uh, now they is actually one uh, secret store available in Google Cloud called Key Management something, but that was available after us, so we uh, should probably in the long run uh, evaluate that. Uh, but I'm not sure we're going to choose it. It depends on how easy to use and, and our needs. Uh, and introducing, shh, that's because it's secret, so we can tell it. Uh, and all this is is basically a set of uh, helper scripts to help you work with Git secrets and also interact or, or get the communication right with the Kubernetes secrets. And I think that's time for a short demo. That was sort of uh, not expected. Let's quit the presentation. 
let's say the same as you. Okay. So I'm going to show how to work and how the scripts work. Uh, you can get them from uh, this uh, GitHub repo if you want to. Um, and hopefully Wi-Fi is working. It is. So when you have the repo, you just need to initialize the repo, uh, which you do by running the init script. And this is asking you for your first um, uh, email account, which should be stored on with your GPS, GPG tools, which you have to have installed on your local computer. And then it's going to use the GPG, GPG, GPG private and public key to uh, encrypt and decrypt uh, your secrets. So now we have initialized the repo and made the first initial commit as well. Uh, and to actually get the thing work smoothly with the um, Kubernetes secrets, we are enforcing a folder structure uh, where you store your keys. So they should be stored under secrets uh, for a specific, could be application or um, whatever. I call it the NDC here. And then we also have a subfolder, so you can have uh, different uh, categories for secrets. So this is the folder I'm going to store uh, my keys in. And my first secret is hello text. And if that was secret, you don't want to commit this to, um, to GitHub, because then you have it on plain text on GitHub, even though we have a private repo, it should be sort of safe, but we want to uh, encrypt this. And to do that, we have a small helper script that now uh, encrypted everything and created that as a C, hello text secret, which we can do a, uh, here's the original, fun, original one, and here's the secret, which is much harder to read. Uh, and we can now actually remove the secret and decrypt it to get it back. So there it's back again. So we can actually now we can actually commit and push this uh, secret file uh, to GitHub or wherever, and it's encrypted and it's quite hard for anyone to to read. Uh, so that's the first one, how you actually add uh, secrets to this uh, repo. Next part is how do you interact now with uh, uh, Kubernetes? And for that, we have this script called sh, uh, which is just a bash script. Uh, I hope it's using as much standard things as possible, so it works both on Linux and OS X, but we have only tried it on OS X so far. Uh, so, but I hope it works on, on Bash as well, or on other distributions. Uh, so, with this command here, I'm, going, I'm taking everything in the NDC slash S3 folder and add that to the app secret, uh, Kubernetes secret. So, if we, before we run that this command, let's do a kubectl, which is the CLI tool for uh, Kubernetes, and look which secrets do we have now. This is our sandbox environment running on Google Cloud, so we don't have any app secret, as you see now. And if we run this uh, script, we should now have added a script to there it is, a secret to um, the Kubernetes. And we can see that it actually contains hello as well by doing kubectl get uh, secrets. And as I said, it's base64 encoded. So if we see that actually is correct, we need to do this. So it says hello. So now we have the secrets running on uh, in our Kubernetes cluster, which means that all the containers and pods and whatever in our cluster can now read 
this secret if we give them access to it. So not, you don't have access to this by default, we have to actually give access to the secrets as well. Uh, so that's the second part. Um, and to give it uh, uh, something access to, uh, to secrets, you need to write a configuration file for your pods, which can be a set of uh, of containers. Uh, so in this uh, definition for a pod, we create a volume called app secrets and tell uh, Kubernetes to use the secret name that named app secrets as well as uh, base for this volume. Then we also mount this volume to this location. So now if we actually can create this pod, can show it is not here now. We don't have anything that's named NDC because that's the name of uh, the pod, NDC pod. So if we create this one now, uh, was it pod.jaml? So this is quite, I'm missing create. This is actually quite fast because it is actually running in Google Cloud with the community. So now the pod is up and running. Uh, so as you can see here. And now we can execute the command to check, do we have access to the secrets in this pod, which was the goal. And to do that, I have a small helper script to execute, uh, execute ls in this folder, which where we mounted the, the secrets uh, in this uh, pod. So these secrets, yes, we have it, that's good. Uh, we can also show that it has uh, parsed it correctly and so we can actually access it. So I said, okay, in, in this file, there was this content. Um, yeah, so that's all good. But then we also might want to update secrets, uh, which you might do. And uh, so let's update this existing one with uh, hello, world. And one thing we have to do after we actually change the text of hello, we do need to do uh, encrypt it again, otherwise it will get overwritten with the old uh, data. So we can write secret hide on the right folder, in the right file. So now we re-encrypted it with the new content. And if you see here, it shows that I have a I have a change in my repo which I haven't uh, committed, and it's uh, this one here, this file. And what this file actually says is just, we are sort of using uh, the Git repo as a database as well, telling us where we have stored all the secrets, or for which application they are actually used. So here we are saying that all the NDC SG secrets are used in the UC Prox sandbox environment in a Kubernetes secret called uh, App Secrets. And this file is used to uh, actually update all the secrets when I'm running this uh, dash r command with the script. So now it's going to go, go through this uh, folder structure and find all the Kubernetes secrets uh, file names and ask Kubernetes, hey, can you give me the current existing secrets with this name? And then update just the entry that, that I want to update. So now when I updated it, it hopefully doesn't change. Yeah, it did change quite fast. It doesn't change immediately because you have to like synchronize in the cluster before it gets available. But now when we run the same command, we get hello world, uh, maybe you can see it. Uh, I can do like this instead, so you see it. So you have hello world, hello world uh, out. So that's an easy way to, to update all the secrets. Uh, so let's go back to the slides. Uh, and you can also quite easily add multiple secrets and things like that. Uh, so a quick pros and cons list. Uh, 
since you choose git secret, they are known tools because we know git since before, so that was quite easy. We had to write uh, like a couple of lines of bash script, which was fun in a weird way. Uh, we did manage to get integration with Kubernetes. And Git gives us both an audit log and a complete history. So we can easily, if we write the wrong secrets somehow, we can revert back to, to previous secrets, which is quite good. And it's also distributed, so if it crashes, someone else will have, have the data. Uh, one drawback is that as more keys, the more keys we have, it's going to take longer time to decrypt the repo and, and files and things like that and running the, the scripts. Uh, so far, it's not an issue for us, but if you have, say, thousands of secrets, we are, we are sort of right below 100. Um, so it's still manageable, but if you go way above that, it's going to be uh, take a bit too long, I think. And it also doesn't have any API which you can maybe listen to or things like that. So you have to do, inside the pod, you might need to monitor the file to find uh, updates to the secrets manually. Uh, but it that, the, was quite easy to get started and was really, um, for us, it made sense to use this one. But as we grow, we might, conf might, might consider changing to uh, the Google KMS, as they call it, in, in Google Cloud. Uh, but, yeah, we'll see. Uh, and, and we can also use this in more than just Kubernetes if we want to. Just a question of how much work we want to put into it. Uh, and I think that was all. Uh, as I said, work for Unicast, and we are hiring, so if you want to work with Google Cloud things and uh, a lot of data, then just go to this uh, site, the 20.jobs, and, and see which positions we have open. And that's all. Thank you.